pool table conditions change daily um, depending on the humidity in the air, uh, the weather outside, uh, how close the pool table is to the grill and how close it is to the cooler and, and how often it's been played on. So there's four or five different main break styles. So the table itself should dictate what style you're going to use. So you should know all break styles and choose the one that's appropriate for that table on that particular day. This video focuses mainly on one style. I will cover the other styles in other videos. But you should know this one first because this one is the most commonly used in the pro tournaments in 2019. Hey, he can be the greatest pool player that ever existed. Uh, but if your break is weak, you're going to get beat by good players. His break is absolutely vital. So if you watch, um, I, I take it for granted that everyone has watched all of my videos. And, and I, I speak mostly about position play and what to do in certain circumstances. Um, but I have not gone over the break yet. And that's because I want to do that subject uh, justice. It is so vital that I don't, I don't want to make a half-assed video on, on breaking the balls. So I'm thinking about doing a whole series of videos just dedicated to nothing but the break. Um, if you're a good player, if if you're a run out player and, and you're competent, um, it, it's time for you, it's probably long past time for you to uh, focus on the break. You have to stop seeing it as a matter of luck. See, you can't get knocked out of a tournament and say, "Well, my break wasn't working." Uh, you have to, you have to stop thinking like that. You have to stop wishing and hoping. Uh, this game is not about luck. Um, if once you can break consistently, make at least one of the wing balls, and you know where the one ball is going and where the cue ball is going. Um, those three things, making a wing ball and controlling the cue ball and the one ball and putting those two balls where you want them. Um, if you're a run out player, your game is going to take off like a rocket and you're going to be really, really hard to beat. Now, do yourself a favor and forget everything that you assumed about the break or even everything you've been told about the break and and tackle take on the subject uh, as if you just picked up a cue stick for the first time in your life and let's just look at and analyze what's going on with the break and what the players are trying to do and what the winning players actually do. A lot of players uh, seem to think that the pros are trying to make the one ball in the side pocket, and that's not altogether true. That happens, um, but that's not exactly what they're trying to do. And there's, there's basically almost no way to make certain where the two balls gonna go. But there are ways to make certain where the one ball is going to go and the cue ball is going to go and the wing ball is going to go. Alright, we're breaking off the rail in this example. And for lack of a better term, we're just going to call it off the rail break. The main objective is to make one of these two corner balls. Usually on this break you're going to be making the four ball and you're going to try to make it consistently every single time in this corner pocket. You want the cue ball winding up here a little bit upside of the center of the table 
and you want the one ball down here for an easy shot on the one to get to the two wherever the two happens to be. Taking a closer look at this graph, we're not hitting the one ball exactly full. In this example, we're hitting it a little bit to the right of center. If you hit this one ball too full, you're going to be making it the one ball in the side pocket. And it's not what you want. You want, I know you've heard different and you think and people have told you and you've seen with your own two eyes that the pros are always making that one ball in the side pocket. That's not what they're trying to do. They're trying to get the one ball down here. And the reason for that is, is the, the one ball is one of the few things you can control during the break. You can't necessarily control the two ball, which nowadays is usually in the back of the rack. So if we can control the one ball while making one of these wing balls, we can get the one ball down here and the cue ball here, and we can do all three of those things consistently if you practice. Then you have an easy shot on the one and chances are pretty damn good that you can get anywhere you want to get on that two where the two happens to wind up. You don't want to make that one ball. Leave the cue ball in the center of the table and be at the mercy of having a shot on the two ball because we can't control the two ball and we can control the one ball. So you're going to be aiming that one ball a little bit off center and you're going to be aiming it a little bit to the left of this diamond here, this first diamond on the left side of the table in the bottom round. So what I do is I'll set up just a spot shot, but not to make it. I'll aim it a little bit left to this diamond, and I'll just get used to the table like that, and I'll shoot that 20 or 30 times until I'm consistently nailing that spot while drawing the cue ball back. Now the cue ball is going to draw back off this one a little bit different while it's racked than when it's not racked. So then once I got the aim down, I'll start racking the balls and practicing my break. Mm -hmm. So if I have to choose one issue that's most important in the break, it would absolutely have to be making that wing ball in the corner because if we don't make a ball in the break, um, we're sitting down and watching our opponent play and furthermore if if we accomplish the other two things and get the cue ball in the center of the table and the one ball down here well we just handed him the game and probably if we keep doing it the match so we have to have to have to make a ball on the break and um, the only one you can control is this corner ball sometimes both but most often it's this side on this corner breaking from this side if you're breaking from this side it's going to be that three ball so that's the most important issue of all so what i would do if i was you is just set up the nine ball rack over and over and over again until you get the speed from this position to where it, if you shoot it soft, it's probably going to go into this rail. If you shoot it too hard, it's probably going to go into this rail. This four ball is what I'm referring to. So you have to get the speed dialed into where you're making that corner ball consistently. So you're practicing the break and you find yourself consistently making that wing ball in that corner pocket from this position. So now you have the speed of the table dialed in. Your next obvious question is how do we get the one ball down here by this corner pocket? And we're going to put a little bit of draw on this cue ball. Not a whole bunch, just enough. Just a little bit of draw and we're going to hit it to the right of center. Just a hair right to the center. And the one ball has no place to go except toward this side rail. So just a little bit of draw and a little bit to the right of center of this one ball and the one ball is going to push into this rail and bounce off the natural angle down toward this corner pocket. <coughs> Again, we don't want to make this one ball in the corner. We just want to leave it somewhere around this corner pocket. Now if you find yourself 
making this one ball on the side it's because it's most likely because you're hitting the one ball too full you're hitting it too close to the center you want it a little bit off center all right so there's no doubt you jumped ahead of me but you're probably saying well i already figured out where how to get the cue ball to the center of the table you just draw it and you're right, a little bit off the, off the center to the to the one ball, and you just draw it. No no left, no right, just straight draw. And you're drawing back to this rail, short of the side pocket, of course. And you're bouncing up for natural angle to center of the table, a little bit toward the top side of the table. All right, so if you were consistently making the wing ball, then you found the speed of the table. Don't change your speed. If you're struggling to get the cue ball to the center of the table while getting the one ball down near the corner, it's because of your aim. Okay, you're not aiming right, or you're not putting enough draw on the cue ball, or you're putting too much draw on the cue ball, so you have to dial those actually three things in at the same time and this is where all your practice time is going to be spent practicing doing all three of those things every single time you break the balls this will make you a monster now after doing this for about an hour and a half two hours you're going to start getting real bored with it it's going to start getting monotonous so I decided to make a game out of it I break eight times and for each break for give yourself one point for each of the three things you're trying to do on a break making that corner ball getting a cue ball in the center and getting the one ball down by the corner if you don't do any of the three things, it's a zero. If you do one, it's a one. If you do two, it's a two. If you do three, it's a three. All right, so at the end of eight breaks, uh, add up your score and use that to judge your progress. The uh, lowest you can get is zero, and the highest you can get is 24. Keep practicing this style of break and put hours and hours and hours into it from both sides of the table. And in coming videos, we'll move on to different styles of breaks. Uh, coming up here is a match between Shane Van Boning and Chris Melling. And each one of them broke eight times because it was alternate breaks. And it, it was a race to 11. And try to figure out the final score of this match before I tell you. Just, just based on how both of these players broke throughout the match. Alright, in, in the first rack in this match, or the first break, Shane breaks softly. And he's trying to dial in the speed of the table. And trying to figure out what speed he needs to consistently make that wing ball. Which in this case is the four ball. He's trying to make this four ball in the corner. Along with that, he's trying to get the cue ball out to the center of the table, and he's trying to get that one ball down here by this corner. It's the only three things he controls. Breaks soft and winds up, the two winds up hitting the three, and I think he was going to go a little bit long anyway. Uh sort of loses control of the cue ball but he still has a little control and it does wind up in what's considered center of the table uh, but the one ball gets kissed into the corner pocket and you certainly don't want to make that one ball because look at the shot he has on the two that two could be anywhere it could be back here so now he's out of control of the game but he winds up with one point for that rack uh, because he did get the cue ball in the center of the table. On the second break, let's see what happens. Watch the six ball. He hits him harder, and the six ball goes straight into the corner. But the one ball went into the side. 
and he loses control of the cue ball. It's nowhere near center of the table, so he winds up with one point. He's got one point for the first break, one point for the second break for a total of two. Third rack, keep your eye on the eight ball. Eight ball goes straight in, and by now he's saying to himself, well, I got the speed of the break dialed in. Now I just have to get control of the cue ball. And the one ball winds up in good position, which gives him two points, but he lost control of the cue ball. And he has a total of four after three breaks. Fourth break, keep your eye on that four ball. Straight into the corner. Cue ball bounces out perfectly for center position. And the one ball winds up right in front of that corner pocket. That's a three. Now, even though this six ball is in the way, it's just bad luck because there's no way you can control this six ball. He has no control where that six ball is going. But everything he had control over, he did perfectly. So that's a three, and he's got a total of seven after four breaks. Fifth break, keep your eye on that five ball. Yeah, he's got the speed dialed in perfectly. Cue ball, he lost control of. And let's keep our eye on the one ball. Um, the one ball went down, so he loses the point there. This cue ball did wind up at center of the table, so we're going to give him a point for that. So that's worth a two, and he has a total of nine. Yeah, sixth break. Keep your eye on that eight ball. problem is the one ball went into the side and he still has lost control over the cue ball and winds up scratching so he gets one point for making the eight ball in the corner he has a total of ten after six breaks and here comes the seventh break keep your eye on that five ball straight into now I don't think that was straight I think that got kissed in but that's okay now he's got way better control over the cue ball. That's what he's looking for. Winds up center to table, and the one ball is right in front of the corner. That's a three there. That's the best you can do. It has a total of 13 after seven breaks. And this is his last break. And note how he moved the cue ball out. He was about a ball away from this round. Now he's about... Now he's about two and a half, three balls out from this rail. Not quite at the diamond. About halfway between the diamonds there. I'm not too sure why he did that. He wasn't happy about something. But it makes the uh, four ball straight into the corner. Bounces out for center table and... The one ball is sitting right in front of the pocket. That's a three. Winds up with 16 points after eight breaks. Pretty good. Um, it could have been better. I'm sure he's not happy with it. Uh, we'll see what Chris Mellon does. and we'll Go from there. So after eight breaks, Mr. Van Boning has 16 points. Okay, this is Chris Mellon, same match. He also breaks eight times during this match for a total of 16 games in the match in a race to 11. So one of these guys wins 11 to 5 for 16 games. Now, Chris's break style is a little bit different than Shane. Shane was breaking on the right hand side, Chris is breaking on the left. They're both at the line, two diamonds up. But Chris is about three balls off the rail, or maybe half a diamond off the rail, two diamonds up. 
so let's add up Chris's score and see what happens. This is the first break. And you'll note the corner ball, what was the corner ball here? It looks like the four ball goes straight into the hole. And he does that during this hall match. That, that corner ball is always going. But watch the cue ball and watch the one ball. One ball goes down on the side, and the cue ball, it just gets away from him. Gets all banged around all the way up to the table. And now look at the shot he has on the two. This is why you don't want to make that one ball. Nobody knows where the two balls go. So this is what he has. He's got one, one point for that corner ball, and he's got a total of one after one break. Second break, corner ball goes straight in, not a problem. But the one ball goes in the side again, and it's pretty much a replay of the same situation. This time he has a shot on the two, but it's not a very good shot. So he gets another point in rack two for a total of two. Now I believe Chris isn't going to the rail with, or trying, he's not even trying to go to the rail with the cue ball. So he's not drawn back off this rail and back toward the center of the table. He's kind of just trying to hit the one ball a little bit fuller and just bouncing out. And not even bouncing out, but rolling out. He's not hitting him real hard here. That time he did bounce a little bit. He's got the corner ball again. Yeah, the one ball's getting pushed all over the place. And or the two balls getting pushed all over the place. The one ball does come up in the right area, so we're going to give him another point for accomplishing that. For uh, two points on his third break for a total of four. Chris never adjusts during this whole game, and, and just the whole match, and, and I don't understand why he didn't either hit the balls a little bit harder or hit him softer. It's like all he's trying to do is make that corner ball, and it's almost like that's all he cares about. Um, but there's so much more to breaking than just making that corner ball. So here's another rack, and the corner ball goes flying in, but the cue ball gets bounced down table on this side by the five ball, and the one ball is nowhere near this corner pocket here. Pretty bad. Um... He gets another point for making the corner ball for a total of five after four breaks. And his fifth break, one ball goes in the side, corner ball goes in the corner, and he gets one point because that cue ball did not come out for the center of the table. He's really losing control of the cue ball badly. He's got a total of six points after five breaks. This is his sixth break and a devastating scratch. He did make the corner ball, so he gets one point. The one ball is not near the corner, and he's doing badly. After six breaks, he has seven points. Seventh break, uh, again, makes that one ball in the side. Again, makes the corner ball in the corner, but he loses control of the cue ball. This one's worth two points. No, one point. <laughs> and there it is for a total of eight after seven breaks. Eighth and final break. No. That's all he's got going is that, that corner ball making it every time. This time he did get the one ball near this corner, so we're going to give him two points. For a total of 10 after 8 breaks, and that's it for Chris Mellon. Uh, his 8 breaks, he comes up with a total of 10, not very good at all. So let's conclude this match and see what we calculate. So the final score of the break contest is Shane Van Boning 16, Chris Mellon 10. So Shane wins by 6. The interesting thing here is he also won the match by six.
The final score was 11 to 5. So that should, it should be obvious, the break is very important. In fact, it might be the most important thing out there. Um, it also should tell you that this, this system uh, that I developed to keep score is accurate. And you can try it out on pretty much any pro match out there, and you'll see that it's accurate. So by, by making a game out of it, um, you're actually challenging yourself and gauging your progress at the same time. So this way, you're more apt to do it because uh, there's a goal to strive for here. You don't want it to become a grind. You, you want it to be fun. You want it to be something that you look forward to because each time you do it, you're getting better at it. The break shot is not only the most important part in pull, and especially rotation, um, it's also the most difficult part to master. And, you know, uh, this is it, guys. This, this is what makes or breaks players. This is the one thing that a lot of guys just, they can't, they can't nail this one. And you, you're going to be the difference. You're going to be the exception. You're going to be the guy that nails it.